everyone, this is Mel from Cardstock Concoctions. I am back today with a fun card, but a very messy card. Um, now, I created this as a swap for, I was part of a uh, swap group with my upline. Every once a month we do a meeting. And so the spring, uh, the theme, <laughs> try that again, theme this time was something spring or Easter. So this is what I came up with. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do all the stamping first, the messy part first. Set this off to the side. I'm just going to throw it over there. What are we going to need first? We are using the Dragonfly Dreams stamp set. Now this comes in a bundle with the detailed Dragonfly Thinlets dies. Um, but we're going to be using just the stamp set and we're going to be using this one right here. Okay? So go ahead, grab a piece, grab, mount up your stamp. Grab a piece of Whisper White that is three and a quarter by four and a half. Again, three and a quarter by four and a half. Don't worry about writing down any dimensions, directions, supplies, anything like that. Click in the description bar below. It'll take you out to my site where you can find the free tutorial. Go ahead and ink it up in Versamark. Sorry, this is Versamark. Go ahead and ink it up in Versamark. Alrighty. And I turned mine kind of cockeyed off to the side. At an angle there. Press down firmly and lift up. Now, as you guys can see, I have a faint um, color with mine. That's because my Versamark ink pad has some color in it. I uh, accidentally dropped it. So that's okay though. I'm using, if yours is clear, you can use clear embossing powder. Today I'm using Whisper White embossing powder. Go ahead and sprinkle that all over it. Now, what did I put underneath here? This is just a scratch piece of paper. Um, that I'm using folded in half so you've got like a little crease there. You know, I should have used my embossing buddy first. Haha. <laughs> okay, so before you guys see them, go ahead and use your embossing buddy on your piece of paper. It'll make your life a heck of a lot easier. Oh, there we go. What the embossing buddy does is that it pulls off all the oils and stuff that are sitting on your paper so that none of the powder sticks to it. I think I got it all. Okay, we're going to find out once we stamp, huh? So, pour it, the excess back into your little pot. We're going to close it up. Now, if you have your volume turned up, please turn down your volume, because this is going to get loud. We are going to heat this up. Let me grab my heat gun here. So, turn down your volume now. You can go ahead and turn up your volume again. I just don't like to blast anybody's eardrums off, so that's why I always tell you guys to turn down your volume. Okay, set this aside to cool for just a second while we are working with our other stamp. So what else are we going to need today? We're going to need watercolor wash. This is a background stamp. It's nice and it's large. It comes in wood and it comes in clear. I have it mounted up. You are going to need the biggest block humanly possible, and that is block F. So it's nice, it's huge, it's a massive, massive stamp. Now, we are using three colors today. First is Peekaboo Peach. Ugh. Now, I've been trying to challenge myself lately. Now, you only want to do about a third of it in Peekaboo Peach. Let's go ahead and stamp, uh, ink that up nice and good. I've been trying to challenge myself lately by using different color combinations and stuff that I'm not normally known to use or think to use. So I keep going on Pinterest and I keep finding all these color combos. And so this is actually one that I found today and that's why I decided to use it. We're also using Pool Party. Ink up the lower half of your stamp in Pool Party. No matter, ooh, my grid paper is moving. I'm so sorry, guys. There we go. Let's see if I can get that stuck down again. Now we're going to get out some more snail. Okay. Whatever colors you're using, 
your lighter colors need to go in your two ends with your darker one in the middle. And you always, 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 always want to add your lighter colors first. Okay, we're done with our pool party. Last, go ahead and grab your Calypso Coral. It's funny to say Calypso Coral is the dark color, but out of these three, it really is the dark color. <laughs> now, you always want to add your darkest one last um, due to the fact that if you overlap and you pick up some Peekaboo Peach or you pick up some uh, Pool Party, it's not going to show on your ink pad. It's not going to affect your ink pad color. Uh, if you did you know, Pool Party on top of Calypso Coral, you're really going to be able to see the color come through. Now, I'm using the, the shorter edge. You guys saw me go long ways. Now I'm going to go short ways and hold it at an angle and just kind of tap it on the inside. Otherwise, it kind of takes up the other portion of it. All right, now I'm not looking for even. I'm not looking for pretty. I'm not looking for any of that kind of stuff. I just want to get the color in there. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Just go ahead and get your color in there because if it overlaps some or it bleeds into it, it makes the card so much cooler. Okay, I like my pool party on the top so and my peekaboo peach on the bottom. So I'm just going to take my stamp and I'm going to turn it over. Grab back in your embossed dragonfly. And I kind of like the middle of the stamp typically. I'm going to stick it down and then I'm going to rub it. Um, this is a really large stamp. You want to make sure that all the color seeps in and gets really deep in there. So you guys can see the piece of paper is quite a bit smaller <laughs> than the actual stamp and you're always going to see the image of the stamp there as well. Now, if you're going to do multiples of these, clean your stamp in between every single one of them just to let you guys know. So always clean your stamp in between. So here we are. Now what do we need? Grab a just regular little tissue, paper towel, whatever it is. And now I dab to start with just to get the main portion of the ink off so I don't bleed too bad. And then I go to another clean portion of the tissue. And then I go like this. Just rub, 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 rub. Back and forth, back and forth. Find another clean spot on your tissue. And go over it again. And you're going to pull off all that extra color that was sitting on top of your embossing powder. So you're, it's an uh, emboss resist. Man, my... Grid paper keeps moving on here. I'm gonna actually stick this down, one second. Okay, sorry about that, it was driving me crazy. Okay, not sure how it wasn't driving you guys crazy. It's an emboss resist technique. Uh, I just used Whisper White instead of Clear. You can use Clear if you like. Now if it bleeds into it a little bit, like this one did here, that's okay. That just adds to the dimension and textures of your card. Don't be afraid of it. All right? There we go. Okay. So we're going to set that off to the side for just a few seconds. We're going to layer up everything else. So what else are we going to need? You are going to need, I'm only doing a card front for my swaps. I'm going to give you guys the directions for the full card. Four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall. Wide, tall. Score it down the middle at five and a half. Fold and burnish. That's what's going to be in the directions so you can make a full card. Also in the directions is going to be the inside whisper white piece for you as well. But again, I'm only doing a card front for the swap, so that's why you only see a card front. You are going to need a two and a half by two and a half piece of pool party cardstock and a two and a half by two and a half piece of Calypso Coral cardstock. So I'm going to turn both of these over, grab some snail. You don't need a lot of adhesive for this. You're just sticking them straight to a piece of cardstock here. Huh, apparently I forgot to stamp that. Okay, so the back of this one. Now I'm going to be leaving, let me see, like show you guys so you guys can actually see this. I'm leaving a relatively larger border. I'm gonna say 3 sixteenths to I wouldn't, say an inch. I wouldn't say half an inch, but three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch. Um, somewhere in that range. So more than an eighth of an inch, but less than a half, you know? So there we go. I like this one with a big, bold border. Now, the bottom one, I'm going to do the same thing with it. 
Your goal is to have the same distance all the way around and in the center. Um, sometimes I achieve my goal, sometimes I don't. I'm a little bit off. All right, so just go ahead and stick those down. Turn over your Whisper White piece. Grab yourself some dimensionals. I strongly suggest five dimensionals. You have not only embossed this paper, which makes it nice and hot, which makes it a little bit crinkly, but you've also saturated it with a lot of ink. Um, so again, I suggest five dimensionals just to kind of give it some extra dimension and some stability. Go ahead and pull the backs off. I'm aiming for this evenly over here. Again, top, bottom, side to side. A little more on your right than on your left. Might even straight. He tilts it up to me. No, I'm not. <laughs> I always check before I stick stuff down these days. I wish I had the gift of being able to look at something going, oh, it's straight, and away I go. I'm not always that good. So, okay, so you have some extra dimension in there, and that makes it great. Now, you're looking at it going, hey, that's really awesome and really cool, and I love this technique because there's no way to screw this up, especially when it comes to the stamping and the colors. But it needed a little something extra. It needed a little pop. Um, so I went ahead and I grabbed our gold sequin trim. Looks like this. And I went ahead and I pulled off five sequins. I've already done this to save us some time. Oh, five sequins. Yay. Four. There's my fifth one. Come on. So I just took a smidge of glue and I randomly placed one, two, three, four, five. And I just randomly placed them. No, I mean, I made nine, ten of these. None of the sequins are in the same spot twice. I will tell you that makes each card unique. There's no way to mimic the exact same inking pattern either. Um, so each card is different even though it's the same. So there we go. That is my January swap for my We Stamp meeting coming up using Dragonfly Dreams and our watercolor wash stamps. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like it. If you'd like to see more of this type of video, please subscribe. This is Mel saying thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye.